Hello and welcome everyone to today's cloud coaching session on getting started with Visual Builder Cloud Service. Thank you for joining us. My name is Tara Van Cleve and I'm a marketing event manager for the developer initiative here at Oracle. Today, we're excited to build a web app that covers all the features you need to start working with VBCS using a Formula One data set to get started. We'll also be recording the session and you'll receive the recording via the same email that you registered with. If you have any questions during the webinar, please drop them in the Zoom chat and Q&A areas and we'll be ready to help answer them. We've also set up a channel in our developer public Slack called Cloud Coaching North America that you can access at the QR code here or at bit.ly slash odevrel underscore Slack. We'll leave the channel open after the event to contact us directly with any questions and to share resources. So today's webinar will be presented by Thomas Palskill, Staff Cloud Engineer, and Aditya Trivedi, Senior Cloud Solutions Technologist. So without further ado, I will hand it over to Thomas. Thanks, Tara. So today we're going to talk about uh, VBCS, but I'll start off with just a brief agenda of what we're going to cover. Um, so I'm going to go through some slides, talk about what the product is, um, what it can do for you. And then without spending too much time in PowerPoint, um, we're going to hop into the cloud itself um, into integration cloud and actually build out an application. Um, so we'll go over you know, how to access VBCS from your cloud console as well as create a new application. Um, and then once we get into the application itself, we're gonna understand business objects and service connections. Um, this is sort of how we manage data within VBCS. And then finally, we'll go into user interface um, and action chains. So we'll build out a simple app. As Tara mentioned, um, we're gonna be using a Formula One data set. Um, it's something I got off of Kaggle. I can share it with anyone that would like to maybe go through this and build it themselves as well. Um, and then once we're done with that application, uh, feel free the whole time to add any questions um, into the chat, and we'll try to get to those as we can. Um, but we'll briefly go over our Code Innovate program, um, just a few slides on that as well. So if we just hop into VBCS, um, it's our cloud-native sort of low-code development tool. Um, cloud-native meaning that it's all in the browser. Um, you can access your application anywhere. Um, not so many issues with it doesn't work on my machine, but it works on your machine um, because everyone's sharing the same environment, right? And it's designed to be easy to use, right? So everything is visual. Um, that includes laying out your logic as well as the UI. So we'll see a lot of drag and drop. Um, and that's not to say that you can't go in and write code if that's what you'd like to do. Um, there is the chance for a complete life cycle. So we have a separate product called Visual Builder Studio. Um, this allows you to have CI, CD, um, Git controls, things like that, manage a Jira board. Um, we won't talk about it much today, but you should understand that that is definitely a function that we have available. One of the big uses we see for VBCS is that it's totally integrated with SaaS. So um, if you're familiar with HCM, ERP, anything like that, you know that um, they have a massive REST backend. VBCS can access those REST endpoints um, without having to type them in one by one, right? So you get the entire library and then you can handle those REST endpoints. And once you build an application in VBCS, you can go back and actually embed that back into your Fusion SAS. And again, as I was saying, um, even though the tool is meant to be easy to use, it's totally extensible. So um, to fight, Despite the fact that it's drag and drop, everything is based on JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and REST. And so it is just a standard JavaScript, HTML application. Um, and the language that we use is called Oracle Jet, or the framework that we use is called Oracle Jet. If you're familiar with that, um, that's good. But if you're not familiar, you can get started just as easily. So visual design. This is probably the easiest place to understand drag and drop, right? Um, We've got visual page layout, everything you see um, as you build, right? So where you see it is where it goes. So we drag and drop HTML elements or combinations of HTML elements onto the page, um, and then they show up as um, we see over here on the right. Um, so you can see your application the whole time. You can always preview it as well. And again, underneath the hood, what this is doing is writing HTML 
JavaScript and CSS for you. So you can always go in, look at the code and modify things. Um, visual design does not stop with UI though. Uh, we also have visual design for our action flows. Um, so say someone clicks a button um, and we need to design the logic of what happens when that button gets clicked. Uh, we handle that in action chains and we'll see that today as well. So digging a little bit more into UI development, as I said, everything is based on Oracle Jet. So when you get into the cloud and you start building in VBCS, if you were to hit that code button in the top right, um, you'd see a lot of classes that say OJ. Um, and then I would say like OJ input text or something like that. Um, OJ just means Oracle Jet. So that's the component you're using. Um, Oracle Jet has extensive documentation on every one of the components that's available. So Anytime you get into the weeds or you're not sure which component to use, you can always go and check on that documentation. Right, so the component palette is made up of uh, over 100 um, different things that you can drag and drop into the application. Right, So they can be as simple as buttons or tables, um, as well as things like layout containers, um, things to help you design. Uh, it's really very extensible. Um, I think at this point, we've got a component for almost everything. Uh, drag and drop where you see it, it's where it goes. Um, that's pretty straightforward. Um, you basically come to the left of the page, pick one of these HTML elements, and then drag that in and drop it, right? Very simple. Uh, the interactive structured pane is going to be on the left side of the page. We'll see that when we get into the cloud. Um, that basically shows you the HTML structure that's been built. Um, sometimes dragging and dropping, if you have too many elements on a page, can be a little bit confusing and it's easier to just drag it into that HTML structure where you know it's gonna show up properly. Uh, Multi-device live preview and security role preview. So um, if you're used to developing web applications on an IDE or something, then you're probably very familiar with opening up localhost um, to check out the look and feel of the application. Uh, in Visual Builder, we have the pretty awesome ability to just hit a play button in the top right, and then it will open the application as it exists then um, and we can play with it, handle any of its live functionality, make sure everything's working properly. And then those security roles are going to be things like um, if you're building an application and your manager has access to delete things, but maybe um, the employees only have access to view those things, not actually delete them. Right? So we can mock those security roles um, so that a developer can handle every role and make sure that the application works properly. And then again, this is all extensible, so it's all based on Oracle Jet. You can write your own Oracle Jet uh, components and then upload them in. Uh, the other thing you can do is use what we call the component exchange, um, where we have some extra components that people can use um, for specific use cases. All right, so that was UI. And then business logic essentially works the same way. You have a list of logical um, sort of functions that you can use on the left, right? So you'll see like if for each um, navigate to a different page, um, call rest service, um, anything like that. And then we drag and drop those into a flow. So again, I think the easiest way to understand this is to think about a button um, that maybe submits a form. So when you submit the form, you wanna check with an if clause that um, data has actually been put in the form, right? sort of a validation. And then at the very least, you would call rest next. Um, and then from there, you can make the decision to take the people back to the home page. Um, but really, everything you can do in JavaScript, you can do here in our business logic builder. Um, and if you would prefer to just write JavaScript, you can do that as well. So I think I mentioned a little bit earlier, um, one of the big use cases we see Visual Builder leveraged for is um, extending Oracle cloud applications. So um, most of the cloud applications are built on VBCS or Apex, um, but if you wanted to add um, your own specific functionality, you could replace any page or add a new page um, and set that up in Oracle applications, as well as having that data connection that I mentioned earlier. Right? And then if you were to leverage uh, Visual Builder Studio on top of this with that CI, CD, um, you could move things between um, development, PAT, uh, and finally to production, right? However many steps you have. 
So data is one of the most important parts of any application, right? Um, there's several ways to get data into VBCS, um, but what they all essentially work on is custom data objects. So if you know like a JavaScript object, it's very similar. Um, you can take them in from spreadsheets. Um, you can take them in from REST APIs. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, you can also bring your own database. Right? So VBCS is spun up with a tenant database. Um, but if you'd like to change that um, to an ATP or any Oracle Cloud database, you can do that as well. And then you can access your tables as business objects. Um, and really, these objects are uh, anything you'd be used to in web development, right? So you come up with field types, number, uh, input text, anything like that, and then you can build from there. I mean, you can easily import and export data. So we'll be doing a bit of this today. Right? So if you wanted to bring data in a CSV file, um, that's essentially what we're going to do for our application. Um, you can do that. Uh, if you wanted to bring it in through the database, you can do that as well. Um, any data that you have in the application, let's say you have it in that tenant database, um, just as business objects, you can export that as well. And then the real power with VBCS, um, which sort of sets it apart, is that it's all based on REST. So when you create those business objects on the database, uh, the first thing that VBCS is going to do is create a series of REST endpoints for you. Um, the REST endpoints are how you interact with that data that you've just created in the database. Right. Um, that's not to say that you can't use external um, REST endpoints. Right. So if you've got a third party REST that you need to connect to, or as we've been mentioning, if you needed to connect to any of those Oracle apps, um, you can connect to all of the HCM ERP APIs um, from the catalog. Right. And so that's going to do it for slides. Um, the next thing I'm going to hop into is going to be the demo. So here I am. I'm in Oracle Integration Cloud. Um, you can see I have my integrations, um, insights, things like that. If you want to access VBCS, you can simply open the hamburger and then click Visual Builder. Um, quick caveat on this. If you're new to OIC, um, there is a button that you need to click to enable Visual Builder. Um, it's very simple. It's in the documentation. Um, but if Visual Builder doesn't show up for you, um, go back to OIC um, within the Cloud Console and then just hit Enable Visual Builder. Right. So if I come into Visual Builder, um, you can see I have all of my applications here. Um, to create a new one, it's very simple. Right, I can call this cloud coaching. And then I have options for template. Um, so I typically use an empty application. Uh, that's personal preference. Um, Oracle Visual Builder Cookbook is something uh, important to have installed at least once on your tenancy. And what that essentially is, is this link here. Um, where you can see recipes for um, most common uh, building techniques that we see, right? So if you click on any of these, um, you'll see an example of the application as well as the recipe to build it. So this is a very important resource for us. Um, if you build it within VBCS, you can actually go in and play with um, the building blocks, right? Uh, Redwood Starter application. So again, if you're trying to match the look and feel of Redwood, this is where you would come. Uh, for now, I'll just do an empty application. Hit finish. And it should just take a second. All right. And then it takes us to this page that I like quite a bit. Um, this kind of shows you everything that you need for VBCS. So the first thing I would highlight is over here on Learn and Help. Um, all of the major like sort of helping blogs, uh, documentation, Anything you need to get you over a roadblock uh, is really listed here. So that's great. And then you have um, your different building blocks. Right? So you've got your applications. Um, all of these apps are responsive, meaning that um, they're progressive web applications. So there was a time in VBCS where we supported mobile applications. Um, we're deprecating that. 
And the idea is that all of our applications should be mobile friendly um, so that they scale down properly. Um, and that's, that's our best practice moving forward. So the first thing you would do is create an app. Um, you can create dozens of apps in a single application. And so you create an application, um, you get your page diagram, but let's think about data before we get into UI design. So you've got really two options here. Uh, I guess we could say three. So you've got service connections. Um, this is going to be any REST endpoint. Um, so we can quickly play with this. If I just create a service connection, I have the option to check my Oracle Cloud applications. So you see I've got my HCM, ERP, all of that. If I just have a third party endpoint, um, I could come to create service connection with the URL. And so we'll quickly do this um, just as an example. So this is just a very simple dummy API. So if I take the URL, um, I'm fetching a list of to-dos. It's just going to be lorem ipsum, right? So I have my action ins over here. Um, you can compare these to like basically CRUD operations. Um, and you also have those here as well. So if I was posting data into a database or something like that, I would choose post. Um, but for now, I'm just getting from a uh, simple API. If I go to hit test, you can see that I get my data back. I can save that as an example response. Um, what that does is help it make me variables um, so that I can present this data. All right, so those are service connections. Also here, you have your backends. So if you wanted to create a backend, um, say that connection to a Cloud Apps instance integration, um, integration is useful when you're connecting to like an on-premise database. Um, and then process comes into play. Uh, we won't really talk about it today, but anything like a expense report, um, something that needs approval, can't wait in a JavaScript loop, um, but needs like manager approval, you would use process, right? So those are your options for backend. And then for business objects, you can come in, you can create just a standard business object, give it your own fields. Um, but the real power here and what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna import business objects. So again, I've got my file from Kaggle. And if I very simply just upload um, my data, so this might take a second. Um, and for that reason, I created a separate application that has the data preloaded. So now this is the same exact Excel spreadsheet. Um, you can see my business objects here. And the way I did it was just uploading data. Um, via the data manager. So import business objects via data manager. And then I have all of my tables. Um, what you can do with these tables is create relationships. So if you were using a separate database, then these relationships would come in based on the table. Um, when you upload via CSV, you have to create these relationships manually. All right. So now we can actually get started and create our first application. So I'm going to go to my new app. Um, I'm going to open main, and then I'm going to open main start. And so you'll see a few things when you open uh, a new application, right? The first thing is going to be the header and the footer. Um, and you'll notice that if I click on it as much as my heart desires, um, I can actually edit this. Um, that's because these are called fragments. So fragments are anything that show up on every page, um, but you don't want to redesign them for every page, right? 
So if you were so inclined and you wanted to change the header, what you would do is come to fragments over here on the left, and then either choose shell header or shell footer. Um, if I wanted to get rid of it altogether, I could go to my root pages, click shell, and now you can see that I have access to delete my header or my footer. Right, so anything you want to show up on every page um, to keep like a standard design, you can create as a fragment. Okay. And then the other thing you'll see is that it comes with some uh, sort of pre-built redwood design. If you don't want it, um, you don't have to take it, right? You can come over to code and then you'll just have a blank application. Um, of course, I always have the ability to undo any of my actions. Um, not unlike standard web development. So I'll undo that. I can leave everything for now. Um, and I just want to simply show you how we're going to get data from my business objects um, or service connections, if that were the case, into the application. So I've got a couple ways I can do this. Um, I can filter through my components. Right? So I can say I would like a table. And then on the right, you can see um, the options I have for my table. So very handy within VBCS. Um, and this is a great way to learn sort of how applications should be built is the quick start. So if I just hit add data now, it's going to load my business objects. So I'll choose races from my um, CSV data here. And you'll see that because I created um, relationships within the table, I can access um, the actual circuit information from races. So I'll take the name, and this is the order that things will appear in. Um, you can always drag them around and reorder them as you'd like. Name, round, date, and then from circuit, I can take uh, location, country, name, All right? So now I'm using two business objects um, to create a single table. On the right, you'll see my primary key. It was assigned automatically. Um, typically it'll find an ID. Sometimes you might need to assign it. Um, okay, now let's say you've got some data that you don't want to display on the table, but you do want to be available, right? So if I take something like, race ID and then drag it into row data. I can keep race ID available for doing programmatic stuff, um, but I don't have to keep it visible to the user. Okay. And so here's where we can add some filter criterion. Um, if you're familiar with the query parameter, you can use that here. Um, more often what we do is use filter criterion. And the way filter criterion works is basically I get an if, and let's say I only want the year to be 2021, right? So this is only going to display races from 2021. And then I can hit done. So you've got some other options here as well. Um, you can add conditions, and then you can change it from if and to if or, right? So there's some strength here that you can leverage. All right. So for now, we're just going to leave it, leave it be. Um, and then we can see our data. So basically, that Excel sheet that we had is now presenting on an application. Um, it is just a basic table, right? So um, we'd like to add some more functionality to this. Um, and if we come over to the right on quick start, we can actually see that now that we've added data, um, we can add all of our other CRUD functions to this data. Okay. So I did mention that there was more than ways, more than one way to do that. So the other way you could do it is by simply coming to your data tab over here on the left, expanding races, and then you'll see your CRUD options here. Um, so get many, create, get one, update. And if I drag get many onto the 
palette, it's going to ask me, do I want table or list? Um, if I were to drag create, it would create a form for me, right? Give it a quick refresh. All right, cool. So now if we look in our property manager before we go ahead with the quick start, um, I'll just do one thing. So let's say uh, you don't wanna totally rewrite your CSS, um, but you do wanna add some padding to this table so that it's not right up on top of everything. Um, you can simply go to style and then add uh, say, 2EM. And then as soon as I click out, I get padding for my table. Um, application starts to look a little bit cleaner. And there's many things you can do with this. All right. So with that created, we're going to go back to Quick Start. And let's say we want to add um, all of the details about the race. So we only pulled a few things um, from our data. But on the off chance that we want to view everything about a single race, um, we can basically click response. Um, I'll unclick links. But for a detail page, we're going to take everything. Um, and now you'll see if I click my live button and I go into my table, um, I can select any row, right? And then from there, I can click on my page and it'll bring back all of the data that it has on that specific race, right? So this is doing a lot of stuff under the hood um, and we'll take a look at that. So I'm gonna go back to my main page and let's take a look at this button. So if I hit design and I hit my races detail button, uh, we can look at what the quick start created for us. So the first thing it did was you can see that I have an event here. Um, the event just means that someone clicked the button, right? Um, you can make these events more complicated. So um, really any DOM action like hover, um, double click, uh, you can choose any of these, but for the most part, um, it's usually just a click. So that's what OJ action means in this case. I mean, you can look through them all. Right? So aux click, blur, um, anything you'd expect from standard DOM. And what that does is it says, okay, once this button is clicked, I want to point to this action chain. And the other thing I wanna do is I need to know which row is highlighted. So whenever I click the row, it's storing that in a variable, right? And I can pass that into my action chain. And then we can look at the action chain. So this is very simple. Right. Um, what we did was we came over to the left here. We chose a navigate um, to page. Right? So we dropped this in very simply. And then we're passing that race ID. So what that's doing is pulling the data from the rest endpoint um, about that specific race using race ID um, that we passed in from the table. Right. And that's taking us to the new page. Yeah, so that's a very simple example of an action chain. Um, it'll get a little bit more complicated if we go to like a create page. So let's say we want to create maybe a circuit. That might be easiest. So when we're creating, um, it's also going to be important that we add everything involved. We want the full business object to be full. Um, if I wanted to move the fields around, uh, for example, like first thing I would probably add would be name. Um, I can do that. So I'll put name on top. And then I'll simply hit finish. And again, you'll see that VBCS is doing a lot of the heavy lifting for me here. And then if I hit my create circuit button, um, we can look at this action chain, but it's essentially the same thing. Right? This is just taking us to a new page. I can come into my page and my form is built for me. If I wanted to click on the form layout and change it into a two column form, I could do that as well. 
So I can fill this out um, for the sake of time. I probably won't right now, but we will look at the save button. So what happens when the form is filled out and um, you finally want to submit the data via those REST APIs back into the business object? So again, we have our action chain based on OJ action, just meaning that someone clicked the button. And this one's a lot more complicated. So the first thing that it wants to do is make sure that um, everything has been filled in. So it wants to validate that um, you've filled in every blank um, and nothing required is not there. Um, it's also gonna assign a variable that says, basically someone has started editing this form, um, keep this alive. So if everything is inserted properly, again, we're just pulling all of these from the left. So this is an if. Um, so if we have that validation true, um, then we're gonna call a rest to our business objects. So we can take a look at this. So this is essentially calling our business object, a uh, rest endpoint that was created for us to post back into our tenant database. Now, this works the same way if you were to be doing um, um, REST endpoints, right? So let's see. Yeah, so the business objects are created based on REST. Um, they exist in the tenant database or any database that you've changed to like ATP or um, any of the Oracle Cloud databases. All right, and then if it's successfully called REST, um, if there's no 400 error or anything like that, uh, it's going to fire a notification, let us know what was saved, and give us the details. OK. So that's essentially what I had to show. Um, the next thing I'm going to hop into is a program we handle. So if you're interested in anything that we sort of just went through, um, we have a program called Code Innovate. And I will share about it. So I have the unique opportunity to work for the Code Innovate program. Um, I think it's every developer's dream to sort of just get to play with code um, with customers and build out cool things. So I just want to tell you a little bit about it. Uh, my boss, my manager, uh, the creator of Code Innovate here at our team, um, takes his kids to Legoland every year. And they do this really cool thing where they handle a master builder class. Um, and the master builder class is a little bit different than what we're used to with Legos, where we open up a box, um, we have step-by-step -step instructions, and at the end we get um, you know, exactly what we saw in the box. Uh, master builder classes work a little bit differently. Uh, you get a random set of pieces, no real instructions, and uh, a master builder walks you through how to build out your solution, right? So when we think about training, a lot of times in tech, we get um, just like a box of Legos, we get step-by-step -step instructions with a picture of what we're gonna get at the end. Um, and Code Innovate aims to be something a little bit different. So it's five half day online. Um, so that's about 20 hours over the course of a week. And we'll meet with you for four hours a day. And what we like to do is give you introduction to cloud services, but again, not in that sort of prepackaged uh, model. Um, so our engineers will work online with your team. And we take a little bit of lead time. We talk to you about what you want to build in the cloud so that you can take something home um, and actually have business meeting for it, right? So. We talked to you for quite a while about your use cases um, beforehand, but then once we get into the cloud, uh, we find that we get big time knowledge sharing um, just because we're working through stuff, going over roadblocks together. Right? That's what differentiates us. Um, also no cost, always important to mention. So we work on your use cases, um, nothing's canned. So if you wanted to build out a VBCS app, you would probably talk to myself or someone from my team for a few weeks beforehand. We would get through all of the tenancy config, anything like that that we need to do um, so that we can hit the ground and spend those 20 hours developing with you. And so the way 
we break up teams. Um, let's say your team wanted to do multiple use cases. You had multiple things in VBCS that you wanted to create, uh, maybe VBCS and an OIC integration. Um, we like to break you off into groups of about four. Um, could be larger, could be smaller, totally up to you. Um, and our engineers guide you through the cloud. So we don't take access to your cloud tenancy, um, but we do sort of show you where to click um, and talk you through what our ideas are for best practice. And then the goal is to build a first pass prototype, right? So maybe it's not a production solution, um, but hopefully what it should be is something that you can um, take back as a first step or um, a good step to getting towards production. And we don't disappear after Code Innovate. Um, you can always reach back out to us. So we do have some requirements. Um, from the customer side, we like to have at least four developers. Uh, this just enables us to um, touch more minds, right? um, train up more people. Uh, it is that 20 hour time commitment. So we do typically do those half days, so four hours a day, five days a week. Um, and we ask that people try to stay on the call as much as they can. Um, we do understand that at times you need to jump to other business needs, but hopefully you're there for as many of those 20 hours as you can be. Um, and then the really big one for us is bring you a use case. So um, we do love to do enablement and we handle that with cloud coaching and things like that. But for Code Innovate, we really like you to bring um, a use case and we like to vet it out uh, before we get started. And in doing that, we need about three weeks lead time. That helps us um, understand the use case, get our team trained up, as well as secure the hours for um, the Oracle resources. And then if you're interested, um, please drop us an email. I think that's about all I have. Thank you so much, everyone. And we hope to see you at the next one. Thank you.